hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach, the Green Hornet. Faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. Hurry, Cato. Here's where we smash every search racket. Some fan, isn't it, honey? Feel that cool air. Is it a good make? I've never heard of it. Cost half what the others do. Oh. It's good. See what it says on the base? Okayed by Renard Testing Laboratories. Oh, that's kind of... John, the blazer wobbling, turn it off. What's that? Hurry, it must be new. It's perfectly flying apart. <laughs> Right along, May. I like those new tires now. You paid so little for them, dear. Are you sure they'll stand up? I got a good bargain. Well, these tires we're riding are okayed by the Renner Testing Laboratories. Renner Testing Laboratories? Well, I knew there were lots of new testing laboratories, but but I never heard. Oh, of... they're okay, I guess. Hey, the wheel feels funny. What's the matter? Well, it's, it feels like a soft tire. Slow down! Slow down! <laughs> The tire! Oh, Look out this tree! She's out of control! All right, Marie. Let's start using our new stove. Uh, yes, ma'am. But I ain't never heard of this kind of stove before. I asked the gas company man, and he ain't never heard of it neither. But you've heard of testing laboratories, haven't you? Oh, sure. Yes, ma'am. They tell you if the stove is good or not. Well, see here on the side of the stove? It says, okay, by Renard Testing Laboratories. I ain't never heard of them, neither. Oh, don't be so suspicious of bargain prices, Marie. I like the oven. I, I'm feared, ma'am. That gas, it, it don't sound like it's coming out right. Oh, get out of the way. I'll do it. Now, there, it's lit. You see, I told you. Miss James? Last line, Mr. Reed. You wanted to catch the afternoon air mail delivery, Reed? Yes, actually. Uh, all ready for your signature, Mr. Reed. Hey, Reed, don't use that pen you got. Why, hasn't it any ink? I, I just got me a new one, and I want you to try it. <laughs> Here, ain't it a dandy? It <laughs> looks okay, but does it write? Oh, Casey, you're kidding. That's what a pen's for, to write. This case isn't kidding, actually. Oh, huh? Why, sure I was, Mr. Reed. The pen doesn't write. It doesn't, but that's, that's what, what a pen's for. for. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this one doesn't. Uh, give me the regular pen. I'll sign. Charlie, I can't figure it. It was such a swell bargain, too. Well, there are bargains and bargains, actually. What well, so for in snakes, Reed. Look at what it says in the barrel of the fountain pen. Right here next to the clip. Okay, by the Renard Testing Laboratory. You see? See what? Well, dear. Well, okayed by the rented testing laboratories, that's what. Holy crow, that proves it's a good pin. But it still doesn't write. Axford, there are lots of fine testing laboratories in this country where experts give products a thorough checkup. Well, that approval means something. Sure, that's why he bought this pin. I know most of them, but I never heard of rented testing laboratories before. You didn't? Do you know whether they're honest like the others? Well, golly, I, uh, 
Gosh, they got to be read. They put out a monthly magazine telling you all about what to buy and what not to buy. You get it free. You got the magazine with you? Well, Mr. Reed, I'd better drop this letter in the mail chute now. Hmm? Oh, yes, do that. This book. Oh, here's an interesting page about fountain pens. <laughs> oh, Miss Case. Yes, sir. When you return, will you ask Gunnigan to come in? Gunnigan? Yes, Mr. Reed. Well, you can see they got me pen listed here under good... I also see they have one of the best fountain pens on the market listed bad, actually. Well, good gravy, Reed. You ain't implying them rented facts ain't correct, are you? You got this book that's free, huh? Yeah. Holy crow, Reed. There's lots of these booklets for the consumer to peruse. They tell you how good the stuff you're buying is. Yeah, I've seen them, and they're all absolutely on the level. Except this one. Ah, uh, you're bats, Reed. How, how can you tell? Well, right from this very page, actually. First... Your pen is called a good one. Actually, it's worthless. And second, this other fountain pen listed here receives approval from honest testing laboratories. And yet here, as I told you, it's labeled NG. But, golly, the name of this outfit sounded so important. And the booklet. There must be thousands of people get took in like me. I don't doubt it. Here he is, Mr. Reed. Watch that, Reed. Oh, here, this booklet. Actually, just got gypped on a fountain pen bought on this booklet's recommendation. Rendered testing laboratories, huh? Who are they? You ever hear of them? I thought I knew most of them. This is one I missed. They didn't miss Axford. They scored a bullseye on him. The way they list products, I'd say it's a phony. Chase a reporter out on this gun again. It might lead to something. Okay, Larry's not busy. Should he go right to this testing laboratory? Uh, not immediately. First, I want him to go to this outfit. Which? Right here. And the fountain pen concern that's listed is no good. No good? Why, that outfit makes one of the best in the country. Exactly. I want Lowry to find out why their product is blacklisted here. I'll go with you. Lowry in the city room? Yeah. We'll make sure he understands how I want this handled. Well, big brain, here's your pen. Who? Oh. Go ahead, take it. It's yours. And if you want to know what to do with it, there's the wastebasket. Ah, oh, golly, Casey, I still can't believe it. When I look at where it says okayed by the rented testing laboratories, I can't believe Michael Axford fell for a racket gag. Golly, it looks so... So kind of impression. You'll learn different when Lowry comes back. Hey, I just took of something. You? Oh, don't tell me you started thinking at your age, Axford. Maybe the pen's okay. Maybe I just forgot to put ink in it. There's ink in it. I, I just pulled a little lever to make certain. Golly, it won't come up. It's stuck. Oh, keep trying. I, I'll get it up close to my face so I can see better what I'm doing. Not too close, Axford. Golly, I'm, I'm tugging at the ink lever with all my might. But it still sticks. Axford, don't point it at your face. Ah, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> That's why, you big lug. you got ink all over your face. Holy crow, look at me, Ty. It's rude. <clears throat> nice jaws, Axford. Right in the wastebasket. I should have thrown it there in the first place. Now i got to get myself all dry clean. What for? Those crooks took you to the cleaners already. Ah, Casey, if Lodi don't get the goods in them crooks, by gravy, I'll give them a bacon up myself. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I mean. I tell you, they're crooks. That's what the Sentinel believes, Mr. Hammersmith. We're checking on this rendered outfit. My company makes as good a fountain pen as any in the country. And yet they had the colossal impudence to give it a no-good rating. That's why I'm here. You say this Mr. Rennert came to see you with a proposition? He did. On the surface, a legitimate proposition. On the surface, mind you. What was it? Uh, Rennert owns this uh, so-called testing laboratory. He puts out this monthly free booklet extolling certain products and condemning others. Yeah, it has a pretty wide circulation, hasn't it? Of course, it's uh, free. Well, Rennert told me they'd like to test my pen. I told him it had been tested and approved by the best in the business. And what did he say then? He threatened me. Threatened? Oh, it was veiled, but a threat nevertheless. He said for $5,000, our product could get the okay of the rented testing laboratories. If not, they'd test it anyhow and... They... And inform their readers that your pen was no good. I get it. Exactly. Practically blackmail. Has he cut into your business by this booklet? Well, I must admit it has hurt sales. Say, do you know whether this Renard really has a laboratory? I don't know. I suppose so. I wonder if all the products they call okay are as bad as the pen we got stuck with. Oh, there are good products and bad. Cheap and excellent. You can't blame a manufacturer if he wants his product to get the okay from some testing laboratory. Yeah, I guess Renard makes a nice thing of this. Uh, why not? <laughs> it's too bad he's that's one more definite. I could take him to court. As it is, well, he guarded his words too carefully for that. And besides, the law takes a long time to get moving. Well, thanks, Mr. Hammersmith. Guess it's my cue to take a powder. Oh, you're leaving? Back to the paper? No, not yet. First, I'm going hunting for a fox named Renard. (laughs) 
2,800. 2,800. And uh, 2,400. 2,400. Okay, total that up. I'll put it in the safe. Yes? Mr. Renard? Well, uh, who wants him? <whistles> Boy, that's a stack of bills. Just exactly who are you and what do you want? Uh, Mr. Renard, I came here to, uh, to test something. Oh, well, that's different. Miss Hanson, take care of the rest of this. Yes, Mr. Renard. You've heard of the Renard Testing Laboratories? Yes, I've been looking through your booklet. You must have quite a laboratory to do complete tests on all the products listed here. What did you want us to test? Could you show me through your laboratory first? I, I see it's right through this door here. Uh, one moment, that's private. Uh, don't have to grab my arm. Sorry, but uh, we are now low, no one in our laboratories. There may be a delicate experiment going on. Now, uh, just what do you want our laboratories to test? I understand you charge 5000 for testing. We do. 5000 must pay for a lot of tests. That price includes publication of results in our monthly booklet. It's given free to the public, so it costs us quite a bit. The money's in the safe, Mr. Renard. Here's the total amount. Hey, 40000 You do a good business. You're not supposed to look at these figures. For the last time, what do you want me to test? I thought you and your partner, Denby, could uh, test a theory for me. A theory? What kind of nonsense is this? You test everything else. What theory? One I got from the city editor. City editor? A newspaper. Right, from the Daily Sentinel. And the theory is that you're making a racket out of this. Get out. Sure, but first I'll take a look at your laboratory. Leave that door alone. You can't go in there. A testing laboratory. Get away from that door. A little late, Renard. I saw the inside of that room. Get out of here. That room was as empty as Axford's head. If you test merchandise in there, you'll do it by instinct. Mr. Renner can explain that. Of course I can. Make it fast. We, uh, Denby and I, merely use that room as a storage room. We don't actually test in there. You're uh, telling me. That's right. But you see, we uh, have we, a... uh, we have another plant which we use for a laboratory. It's, uh... Where? Well, it's, uh... It better be good, Renard. I have a date to tell the boss what I know, and I know plenty. <laughs> Reporter, did it take you all afternoon to cover a simple yarn? It's a yarn, and it's not so simple. You got something? Gunnigan, that guy Rennett is working a racket, or I'm the Flying Dutchman. You saw his laboratory? A room labeled laboratory. When I opened the door, it was as bare as Mother Hubbard's cupboard. Reed's gone home to his apartment. I'll get him on the outside phone. Keep giving me the story. Rennett is a partner named Denby, and they're collecting plenty. I saw the girl shove 40,000 plus in a wall safe. Yeah? Keep going. Hello? Reed? Gunnigan. Larry got some dope on that testing outfit. Oh, Renard? Larry says there's no laboratory at that outfit. They say it's out of the state. They rake in the money. They gave Larry the yarn that the testing is done in another state. I see. Are they making much money? Cleaning up. Larry saw them put over 40000 in a wall safe. 40000 huh? Yeah? All right, Gunnigan, take his story and keep it in reserve. We may need it when the Sentinel cracks this racket yarn. You mean if, Reed. <laughs> Have it your own way, Gunnigan. If we crack it. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Man, and if we crack the racket... Gunnigan doesn't know it, but that racket is going to be cracked. Starting right now. Cato. Yes, Mr. Red. I told you about that rented testing laboratory racket, Cato. Yes, sir. That was Gunnigan on the phone. Lowry brought back the information I've been waiting for. Those crooks claim their laboratory's out of the state where the police can't touch it. Well, that puts it up to us. The green hornet? I want the mask and the gun. We're going out in the black beauty. I'll get them. Oh, one more thing, Cato. I uh, want a stethoscope. A doctor's stethoscope. I don't understand. You get it first. I'll do the explaining while the Green Hornet is on his way to rub out this racket. The curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a moment.
Now to continue our story. As soon as darkness descended over the city, Britt Reed opened a secret panel behind his clothes press. Followed by Cato, he made his way along a narrow passageway within the wall of the apartment house, which led directly to a supposedly abandoned building in which stood the gleaming, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. The Black Beauty's in perfect shape, Cato. Tires, oil, plenty of gas. It's all checked, Mr. Ritt. The Black Beauty's amazing speed has saved the Green Hornet many times, Cato. It mustn't fail tonight. No, sir. It's a good thing that doctor friend of ours knows you're a chemist, Kato. Otherwise, you might have wondered why we wanted this stethoscope. Yes. While you went for it, I made several phone calls. Renard and Denby have been informed that the government is interested in their firm. I gave that impression, keeping my voice disguised. I also took a look at their monthly magazine. Yes, sir. A fountain pen manufacturer named Hammersmith has been blacklisted in their booklet. We're calling on him. Where are you going? Cato, the Green Hornet is going to play those two crooks one against the other. After we call on Hammersmith, they'll get even more panicky than they are now. The superpowered car roared to life as Britt Reed stepped on the starter. Then it slid out into the deserted side streets, a swift-moving shadow that once more carried the Green Hornet on his errand to aid justice. Miss home, Kato. Come along. He's alone? Well, Hammersmith is a bachelor. He lives alone. You understand what we're to do? Yes, Mr. Ritt. We've got to make it look as if he's being tied up very firmly. Actually, I want him to be able to release himself in time to call the police. I understand. Make sure your mask is fastened securely. Here's his door. Give me the weapon. You diluted the gas enough so that he won't lose consciousness? Yes, sir. Here he comes. Keep to one side. I want him to see me first. Yes. What? Inside. Two minutes. I get this hard move. What's the meaning of this? Close the door. Where's your phone? That mask. You're the green hornet. Hurry, or I pull the trigger now. Yes. Yes, in here, the library. So you wouldn't pay the 5,000 rented ass, eh? 5,000? You're, you're in with Renard. You know how to deal with stubborn men like you, Hammersmith? They sent you over. Are you going to kick in with that money? No, it's a racket. In that case, I'll let you, you have it. You can't shoot me in cold blood. If I pull this trigger, Hammersmith, you'll get nothing but gas. Gas? Enough to render you unconscious till we can safely get you out of here and over to where Renard is waiting. You can't fight me. I won't go. I'm sorry, but... Don't take it. Gas, gas I can't breathe air. Oh. Help me lift him into this chair. That's it. Now tie him up. Yes, sir. Now tie him up. Yes, sir. Now that he's unconscious, I can phone Randard and tell him just when to expect Hammersmith. Briff Reed raised his voice purposely. He knew that Hammersmith, while unable to move, was still able to hear what was being said because Cato had lessened the effect of the gas. As soon as the call was completed... Come outside. I want to look around before we take him. Britt Reed and Cato left the room. Hammersmith watched them go and... Take me over to Ritter, huh? If I could only move, get these bonds loose and put the gas... I... I can move. I must be wearing off. Close to the phone now. My hands, if I put a little more pressure... There, it's loosening. That's it. Only one hand... I put the phone down and dial. Got to hurry. Hurry. Don't they answer? What's wrong? Police headquarters. Doyle talking. Listen and pay attention. The Green Hornet's got me. The Green Hornet? Say, who's this talking? This is Hammersmith. He's taking me over to Leonard's testing laboratories. Hammersmith, the guy who makes fountain pens. We'll be right over. No, no, not here. To Renner's laboratories. Yeah, I got that. I haven't much time. The Hornet will be back. He's in with them. They're racketeers. You've got to get there, understand? They're going to do something. I don't know what. As the desperate man spoke hurriedly into the telephone, Rick Reed and Cato listened in the hall. You're in, Cato. That gas was just weak enough for him to phone police headquarters. Yes, sir. I hate to put Hammersmith in a position like this. He's a fine man. But it's the only way to catch those racketeers. And if Hammersmith knew it, he'd be only too glad to help. I understand. But that would mean he'd learn the true identity of the Green Hornet. And, and that's impossible. He's finished, Mr. Ritt. Uh, yeah, 
Now, raise your voice, Cato. We don't want him to know we overheard every word. All right, we can take him now. Nobody waiting outside. In the world. You, uh, you're back so soon. Tried to reach the phone, eh? Uh, uh, how do you know? Then move. It won't do you any good. Well, what are you going to do? What I'd intend to do from the first. You're going to Reynolds. <laughs> Hello, Major Axford speaking. Hey, Axford, you've been looking for something from headquarters for a long time. Now I got a special scoop for the sentence. Who's talking? Who do you think, you lame brain ex detective? Cully, is that you, Dyne? I didn't recognize you when you were so polite. Watch your scoop. Remember who's doing you the favor? Sure, Dyne, sure. Don't the sentinel always play bar with you when we get a lead for the police? Okay. I'm coming by your way in a squad car. Who's the tip about? Cook, you've been after since you pulled into town. Sugar and snakes. You mean the green hornet? Who else? Sure, it's the hornet. He's in with the racketeer named Renard. Want to go along? Holy crow, you're darn toot now you want to go. You're going to have company when he goes to Renard. Oh, okay, okay. What's the trouble? Hey, Louie, get your clothes on. We're going out. Axford, will you leave me alone? What are you calling me for? Guy, just give me a scoop. Scoop, huh? Chocolate or vanilla? Uh, Gotti, will you press the cobwebs off your mind? It's a scoop on the green hornet. So what? I'm not even... What? The hornet? The green hornet? That's what I'm telling you. Dane is going over to Renard's laboratory to have him. Renard and the hornet? Boy, that is something. We'll be over to pick you up in five minutes. I'll be ready in three. I ought to be a fireman the way I got to get dressed. Green Hornet, huh? Come on, Gunnigan, answer the phone. Is everybody asleep? Uh, hello. Gunnigan, get your shoes on and get over to the paper. What for? There's a story and it's due to break. I recognize that yapping voice of yours, Lowry. If this is a gag... It's I... not a gag. I know you don't hold on the lobster ship to the Sentinel. You're darn right I don't. Nothing ever happens this time of night. Plenty's going to happen, Gunnigan. Plenty. Yeah? <laughs> Name it. It's the Green Hornet. He's due to be at Renard's testing laboratory. And your little reporter's going to be there with him. What? Why didn't you say so? I'll keep page one open. You keep page one wide open. What is it, Renard? What's up? About time you got here, Denby. We have to cover up. He said something on the phone to me about a tip. All I could say, it's Hammersmith. What about him? Someone called. Said he was coming over with a bunch of government men. What? They're going to grill us plenty. But how can they? They've nothing on us. We listed his fountain pen in our booklet. Called it no good. Well? That pen's been government tested. They can prove we've been working a racket. Renard, if we work fast, we can convince them we've made an honest mistake in this particular case. That's what I called you for. We're cleaning out the safe. Miss Hansen's inside now. Who called you? I don't know. But whoever it was, we owe him a debt of thanks. Here are the contents of the safe, Mr. Renard. Uh, hand them over, Miss Hansen. Yeah, I'll take the checks. Be careful of them. They're more important than the money. They're the checks of people we've forced to pay us. Well, that's all. You better go, Miss Hansen. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. <laughs> now, you take those checks and beat it. I'll talk to Hammersmith and the government men. Wait a minute. Miss Hansen forgot to close the safe. What? Oh, that little fool. She knows the government men will demand that I open the safe. If it's already wide open, they'll realize we've been tipped off. There we are. Now, you beat it, Denby. All right. Now, don't destroy those checks unless you hear from me. Understand? Uh, I understand. Hand them over. What the mask? Hey, those checks. You're the Green Hornet. I've seen pictures of that mask in the paper. I'm going to let you have it. A gun. No, you... Let you... Away, huh? Let go. Let you... Gas. You shot me. I saw your deliberate cold blood. You'll recover very soon, Denby. Soon enough to meet certain people. Ah. Uh... His pockets. Hurry. He's unconscious. Yeah, he should have some checks on him somewhere. Yes? Yeah, I'll take him. Come on. What's the commotion? I had grab him. Mask, what have you there? I came for you, Runner. I'll get you first. Uh, stick up, huh? Missed that time. Now it's my turn. Oh. Take him inside here. Hurry. Runner almost got me. Didn't have time to use the gas weapon. I had to hit him. Is this all right? Yeah, it's fine. Close the door. Where's the safe? It's locked. Yeah, I thought it would be. That's why I told you to bring that stethoscope. You have it? Yes, sir. From Lowry's description of the safe, I knew it'd be one like this. A stethoscope amplifies sound, Kato. You place it against the safe. Mr. Baird. Yeah, what? A window. 
A car's coming. I can't help but I gotta get this safe open. I can hear the clicking through the stethoscope. Curly, please. I'm going as fast as I can. They come fast. The safe must be open before they get here. Doyle? Yeah. Here, Axford, you know how to handle a gun. I'd rather use me fist dial. Take it, you sap. This is the hornet we're after. Here's the door. There's a light on the inside. Open, snakes. It's open. We'll head for the inside office. Doyle. Huh? Holy mackerel. Here's a guy tied up. Golly, he's got a handkerchief tied over his face so he can't see. We'll have him untied. Yeah, wait a minute. These nuts. There. Holy crow, it's Hammersmith. The gag. Here, I'll take it out of your mouth so you can talk. That's better. He brought me here, tied up. Where is he now? I I heard noises inside that door. The inside office. Can you walk, Hammersmith? A little, little step, but I... Quiet. I can hear them talking inside. Got him. Yeah. Listen. Come on, Dindy. Get up. Get up. The four outside moved closer as Denby and Renard discussed what had happened to them. Who came in here? It was a hornet. He gassed me. A hornet? What did he want? Did he gas you? No, took me on the jaw. Uh, what did he want? From what I've heard, just one thing. He won the share of our racket. He said so? No, but the hornet's reputation proves that. Besides, he took nothing. Uh, that's right. He... Renard! Huh? The checks, they're gone. What? Gone. They were in my pocket. It's empty. The hornet took them. They won't do him any good. He can use them against us. They're proof we're holding up certain manufacturers for 5000 apiece. Don't try nothing. It took my life with you. Hammerstein. Stand where you are. Why, of course. We heard your cooks talking. Is that so? Every word. That's very interesting. But unfortunate for you, you can't hold us merely by what you overheard. You're running a racket. Are we? What are your facts? Holy crow, we heard you talking about the checks and the... Checks? Sure, the ones the Horner took. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but if you'd like to look at our safe and see for yourself we have nothing here... Go ahead, open it up. From the sick way you're talking, we ain't got nothing in there to grab you on. We have enough. What we heard is proof in any court. We can give you a battle on that. Here's the open safe. Now, holy crow, there is something in there. Get away. No, you don't. You open it and it stays open. Hey, Doyle, look at this. Here's checks from all the manufacturers these crooks put the screws on. Renard, you fool, that finishes us. A testing laboratory, huh? Blackmail, that's what it is. Blast that green hornet. He did this. Yeah, I guess he wanted the racket feel to himself. Hey, yeah, look at this note, Doyle. It's from the Hornet. Note? Super and Snakes. Where was it, Lodi? In the safe with those checks. Well, golly, go ahead, read it. What does it say? Nobody runs a racket in this city without hearing from me. And it's signed the Green Hornet? Yep. Holy crow, Lodi. That sure proves the Green Hornet's the biggest crook in the country. Look at what he says. There ain't a racket going on, but what he don't have his finger in it. You're telling me, Axford. And now it's time for us to tell Gunnigan he can tell the world in the Daily Sentinel. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated. The situations and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons or events of the past or present is coincidental. 
This drama concludes our Green Hornet series of programs to the mutual broadcasting system. Next Tuesday night, however, at this same time, Ned Jordan, secret agent, will be heard over most of these stations. Consult your local newspaper for the exact time for Ned Jordan, secret agent. Field and Farrington speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>